We're going to continue this conversation here about the coronavirus and really the political implications, if there are any here. Judge Ken Del Vecchio, he's attorney and GOP strategist, joining us live. Scott Blakeman as well, next to me here, political commentator. Guys, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your time. Um, and I, I will start with you, Scott. Is the president doing enough? We know that he's allocating $2.5 billion to, to, to fight the coronavirus. We're starting to see this sort of uh, step up here on the public stage here, especially what happened with the markets. Is the president doing enough? Well, I wish the market dropping a thousand points wasn't the catalyst for him to finally step up. The response has been late. It should have been over a month ago. Secretary Azar at HS HSS is doing a good job. Tony Fauci, they do have very good people. But problem is, President Trump is focused on ridding and gutting departments of so-called disloyal people. And what's happened, we're losing a lot of very good experienced government officials, career foreign servant uh, diplomats that we need to fight this crisis. So that's what I'm concerned about. And President Trump two weeks ago said, or last week said, oh, the virus will be over by April when it gets warmer. Well, viruses wasn't caused by cold weather. So hopefully he needs, to, the United States has to lead as we did with Ebola. People said that was President Obama's shining foreign policy achievement. Uh, coordinating the worldwide response to Ebola. And I hope President Trump, look, I'm a Democrat, but I'm rooting for him to succeed in this, and, and hopefully he will. As a country, uh, Ken, I'll let you rebut that. Whoa! You know what that is? It was an earthquake. A big distraction. That was a big distraction, and it's a big distraction what the Democrats are trying to do right now. This is not a pandemic. This is a serious matter, and it's rather disgusting with what the Democrats are trying to do with such a serious issue. It's a distraction from the fact that President Trump has a great economy. Unemployment, 3.6, lowest level in over 50 years. 3.9 for Hispanics, 5.6 for African Americans. Great tariffs, lower, lower reductions in interference from government regulations. It's a distraction. Let me just bring back in Scott. Uh, go ahead and answer that. Well, it's unfortunate. That's a good stump speech for Trump. I, Ken, I didn't realize you're an infectious disease specialist. As you heard Tony Fauci, this guy knows his stuff. He's been doing this since 1968. He says we're on the verge of a pandemic. This is real. No one is trying to politicize it. You are, Ken. This is, a, this is we all have to come together. Thank this. you, Dr. Blakeman. Well, Ken, you're, I listen, you're, I, you're unlike this administration, I'm listening to the experts like Ken. You're espousing points like as if you were a physician. No. You're not a physician. <laughs> I'm repeating what the, the experts the are Center saying. The Center from Disease Control is not underfunded. You know why it's not underfunded? Because the president and his administration just put in for $2.5 billion. They cut it 19%. It doesn't matter that it's cut. Right now, where there's this serious issue, they're asking for $2.5 billion to try to develop a vaccine, to try to develop kits that can test for it. You know what we should be doing? We should be blocking the borders from allowing in people from certain countries. Let them be inconvenienced for a while. They don't need to come into the United States and potentially spread this disease, which there is nothing that's even close to a pandemic or even an uh, epidemic. Uh, you, you're not listening. You just the heard United the States. expert in the previous no, segment. We're about, on the verge of a pandemic. They're talking about in China and Iran. It's, it's spread around. Look, this thing says it's in Spain, it's in Italy, and it could very easily yeah, spread here. Okay. And that's why we don't need political speeches. We need to get the experts who sadly have been gutted from many of these important posts. I want to jump in really quick here. Um, obviously, there's still a lot to learn here with the coronavirus. And kind of pivoting back to what is happening uh, tonight here. There is a debate that's happening tonight in Charleston, South Carolina, for uh, the Democrats that will be speaking. My question for you is this. Will this be an attack point, even though, and I, I heard what you said, that you don't want this to be politicized. And, and I, I do feel a lot of people think that. But will it indeed be on the debate stage tonight? Um, and most importantly, when you headline what the economy is doing, what the markets rather are doing right now going down, does this hurt Trump's platform? And will the Democrats take this as a shot? Again, I hope all the Democrats tonight will echo what I'm saying is that this is the biggest crisis of the administration. This is a worldwide crisis. We cannot say, despite Ken's expert opinion, that we're not going to be touched by this. So I would hope all the Democrats will come together and say what we need to do. And, I, and the administration's response has not been quick enough. And I'm worried that instead of talking about who's disloyal and, and drawing up lists of people, you have experienced people there, but we need to rely on them. And I hope President Trump relies on them and not his sometimes oh uninformed God, instincts. Scott, Scott, please. The politicization of this is solely by the Democrats. Donald Trump wasn't baking politics out of this. Donald Trump is doing what he often does. He's responding to people attacking him baselessly. He's, he's asked for $2.5 billion to fight this 
this potential pandemic worldwide, which isn't even an epidemic or isn't even a major crisis in the United States right now. He's preparing at the appropriate time. Democrats talking about this on the stage in a debate tonight is not only a farce, it's gross. All right, we're going to cut it off there, but I do want you to stick around, and we appreciate you guys being good sports about this. Uh, we've got today uh, Judge Ken Del Vecchio and also Scott Blakeman. Uh, guys, thank you both for coming on. We appreciate your time.